great things. I hope you guys are all having a, a good day so far. Uh, as Carly had mentioned, uh, this whole week is based off of Google products. Uh, and today we're gonna be talking about Google Docs. Uh, so let's start off by talking about like, what is a Google Doc? Google Docs is a free program created by the American tech giant Google, and it allows you to edit and create beautiful Word documents. And uh, for those who don't know, like a Word document is just anywhere where you can type things out and kind of orient them and add them in specific ways that you want to. Uh, for example, Google Docs can be used to create professional resumes or attractive posters. Uh, this program is very similar to Microsoft Word, which is another type of word processor. So if you're familiar with Word, uh, you might want to look into Google Docs as well. Uh, here's how to access Google Docs. Uh, you can do that in several ways. Uh, the first way you can do that is by uh, visiting the website, uh, which is docs.google.com on your web browser, uh, which could be Google Chrome or Firefox. Or you can download the Google Docs app, which is available on the old App Store or on the Google Play Store. Uh, make sure that you have a Google account to gain free access to Google Docs. Uh, there's a link that will direct you to a brief tutorial on how to make a Google account so that you have access uh, to Google Docs for free. Here's how to download Google Docs. Uh, if you're on an Apple iOS device, uh, you would go onto your iPhone or iPad, click on the App Store app, which should have a logo just like that. And then you'd want to search Google Docs in the search bar of the App Store, then click install or get. And then if you're on an Android device, you'll do the same process, but you'll go through the Google Play App Store. Then here are some of the benefits of using Google Docs. Uh, the first and um, the biggest benefit of using Google Docs is that it's free. Uh, unlike Word, the features of Google Docs are all available for free. You don't have to pay uh, to access all of its functions. Uh, the second benefit of Google Docs is that it has some unique functions that are uh, exclusive to Google Docs. For example, voice typing is something that Google Docs has, uh, but Word does not. And the third benefit is security. Uh, you can choose who views, edits, and makes comments or suggestions on your documents. Here's some of the cons of using Google Docs. Uh, when you use Google Docs, there's not as much design or formatting options. So Google Docs has less tools than Word when it comes to designing documents. I also think Word has a few more uh, templates. So if you're looking to start off with a kind of like a base model, which is what a template will give you, uh, and then edit from there, uh, you'll have much more options using Microsoft Word and Google Docs. Unlike Word, Google Docs is not very efficient in positioning images in documents, creating templates with shapes and banners, and table formatting. Keep in mind, Word does cost money to access. Uh, at the same time, Google Docs is much easier to use than Word. So, so there's a, kind of a bit of a difference between Google Docs and Microsoft Word. Uh, if you use Google Docs, it will be free and it's a lot easier to use than Microsoft Word. But at the same time, uh, Microsoft Word, while you pay a bit, while you pay some money to access it, you'll have uh, much, uh, much more options and it's a bit of a more premium, I want to say. It gives you a lot more options, a lot more tools to use uh, than a Google Doc. So depending on your situation, you might value one over the other. And that's how you would choose whether you want to use Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Here's some of the features of Google Docs. Uh, first is voice typing, and that is a unique feature to Google Docs that turns your speech into text. That way you can still write on your Google Docs without having to type. Uh, here's a link to a YouTube video that thoroughly explains how to use and set up the voice typing feature. Essentially what the voice typing feature allows you to do is it allows you to speak into your device's microphone, then whatever words you're speaking into the microphone, your Google Docs will automatically turn that into words on the screen. So all you have to do is speak and then Google Docs will turn that into text. Another feature of Google Docs is templates. Uh, Google Docs comes with a variety of templates to choose from. 
and depending on the occasion. For example, you can create resumes, simplistic posters, grocery lists, cover letters, or brochures. If you're not happy with a template, you can create your own design as well. So when you go onto the Google Docs website, uh, you'll have the option, you'll see a screen that looks just like this, and it has different templates that you can use. For example, here's a resume one, here's one for a recipe, and here's one for or a project proposal. Uh, and then you would open that template, and then you would uh, just change out the words for what you'd want. So for example, on this resume one, I know it's a bit small, but it can, you says your name, you would just swap that out and you would put your name. So you just have to uh, put in the different content that you want, but it formats uh, your document the way that uh, the template designs it. So it makes it a bit easier to do or to construct a certain type of document. Now let's go into a live demonstration on how to use Google Docs. The first thing you want to do when setting up Google Docs is go to the Google Docs website, and that would be docs.google.com. You want to make sure that you're signed into your Google account so that you can use the Google Docs for free. So let's start off by looking at how you would start a new document. Uh, first off, uh, you can see here that under the Start a New Document tab, there are many different options for starting a new document. Uh, you can start off with a blank document, or you can use one of the templates. Uh, and then if you go to Template Gallery here at the top right, uh, you can expand uh, into more options for your templates. So of course, you have your resumes, you your letters, uh, you have a few things for work. So if you want to take notes, you could take or you could use a template from there. And all you would have to do is uh, swap out the content and the words. Uh, for our purposes, we'll start off with a blank document. So once you open your document, uh, the first thing that you want to do is to, um, is to change the title of the document uh, in the top left. So here it says untitled document. If you hover over that, you can click rename. And then you would change it to whatever name kind of fits your document. So I could do Pregnant Zero's live demo. And then it automatically saves as with this name. One of the good things about working with Google Docs is that everything automatically saves. So you don't have to worry about uh, forgetting to save and then losing all your progress. And then the next thing you can do is just start typing on your document. So you could say, all you have to do is say, I love Tyree. So it's just uh, typing on a computer like any other kind of Word document uh, out there. So what you could also do is change the appearance of your text uh, through formatting. So as you can see along the top, you have a few different options for how to change your text. Uh, one of the first ones you want to try doing is you can select your text and change the font of the text or the style that it comes up in. So if you go click on fonts, you know, it'll come up with a list of different fonts that you can change your text to. So you could choose this one if you kind of want more of a stylistic writing. If you want to type uh, kind of writing, you can choose Times New Roman or you could continue scrolling down and see kind of which one you'd like to work with. I'll go with Oswald. Then you could also uh, change the size of the text. Right next to where it says font, uh, it has font size. If you wanna make the size bigger, you would click on the plus next to it and you can see that the font becomes bigger on the screen. Then if you wanna make it smaller again, you can click on the minus on the left side. And you can see that the font becomes smaller. Or if you know what, si what size you want your font in, you could click it on the number in the middle and it will come down with a few options or you can type in your own. Then uh, a couple more options are you can change the style of the font. So right now I have it set to normal text. I, as you can see here, it says styles. You can change that style to a title and it kind of changes how it uh, looks on the screen. There's heading, and then there are even more options there. 
but I'll put it back on to normal text, uh, change my font back, and then increase the size. Another thing you can do is you can change the color of the text. Uh, you would do that by going to these few buttons here. And you want to click the one where it has the letter and then the color underneath, and you can change the text color. So again, if you want to uh, change this text, text you select it and click on text color, and it comes up with a few options for different colors for the text. So you could change it to blue, and you can see it shows up as blue there. Or you could change it back to the black that it usually is. You can also highlight the text. So if you want to emphasize a certain part of your document, you can select it, and then all the way to the right, you can click on highlight color, and then you can choose whichever highlight you want. So you might want to go with yellow, and you can see how it highlights there. And then you can choose any of these colors here. You can go with pink. And, and if you decide you don't you don't want to highlight, you just go here and click none. And of course, you have a couple other options where you can bold your uh, your text like that. You can italicize it or you can underline it. I've just been doing the shortcuts, but you can also go to the top and click these buttons here, and you can see how it changes. Uh, now we'll show you how to change the margin of your, uh, your document. Uh, the easiest way to do it would be to go to the top, and you can, if you see these lines at the top, you can change where those start and that will change your margins. And then you can use this to change your first line. In. So that's how you play with the margins. I believe there's also another way to do it where you can go, I think it is, uh, it's either, I think it's a format where you can change the margins. Uh, I'll have to find that for you and I can go through that in the, lot, the live demonstration, but you might, you should be able to do it with these tools here at the top. Then here are some tools uh, available in the main taskbar. Uh, if you make an, an edit to your document, for example, you say you want to say, I love Cyber Seniors webinars, but you accidentally change it to one-on-one -on -one calls and you want to change that back, you can use the undo button. You can click on the button here and it will go back, or you can click on the redo button to change it or to redo what you had done. Again, there's some also some keyword shortcuts. So if you use Control C or sorry, Control Z, um, you'll be able to easily go back and forth. Uh, then you have in the main toolbar, you have file and you can go to print. And then from there, you can print your, your document. I'm thinking on, uh, you can do the, uh, zoom into your device. So uh, here it says zoom. Um, you can click here and then you can change the how large the document appears on your screen. So right now I have it on 100%, but let's say you want it to be a bit bigger so you can see a bit more. Uh, you can click on to 150% or if you want it to be a bit smaller so you can see more of your document at once, you click on 50% and you can see it all at once. Then there's the spell check option, which is here. Uh, you, what you would need to do is just click on the spell check and it will check to make sure that everything in your document is spelled correctly. So right now it says it looks good, but let's see what happens if I make a spelling error. Let's say I spelled it cyber, cyber seniors with a C instead. Then you go to spell check and then it highlights cyber seniors and says, I can change that to the correct spelling, and then I can accept that change by clicking accept, and it changes it for me. Let's see what else I can go through. Uh, one thing you might also want to do is use uh, numbering or bullet formatting. So uh, if you see here, it's got bulleted list and numbered list. So if you want to do a bulleted list, you'd click on one of these styles and then you click on that. So you could make a list from there. So you could say, I love cyber seniors 
webinars, and then once you click enter, it automatically comes up with a new bulleted point. One on one calls. Uh, and then you can see, or if you click on tab, you can do like a sub bullet. So if you click on tab, then you have this point that comes underneath. Uh, and you can put something else there. Okay, so um, let's talk about how you can change the editing mode. As you can see here at the far right corner, it says editing mode, and you can click on this drop down here and you can change how you edit the document. If you're using editing mode, everything that you do to your document automatically uh, edits into the document. Then, or you can use the suggesting mode where all of your edits become suggestions. So if I click on suggesting, then you can see here I'm in suggesting mode. So if let's say I want to tell someone that they can, they can change something in their document. So let's say I'm editing someone else's document, that's where this will become uh, the most useful. So if I want to say, instead of I love cyber seniors, you can say we love cyber seniors, and I can click on backspace, and it shows that uh, my suggestion would be to delete I, and then my other suggestion, if I put we, you can see that it shows up as a suggestion here at the right corner or on the right side of the page. It says we can add we. So if you're editing someone else's document, you might want to use suggesting mode there. And then if you're doing uh, the viewing mode, it just gives you, or it allows you to see um, the document in its final form. And you can go back to editing and you can see some of the suggestions that someone has made. So if you say you want to accept the suggestion, you would click on the uh, check mark here at the right side and then then another check mark there and, it, and your suggestion becomes part of your document. I want to go through um, how to share a document. Uh, I think that's also one of the biggest benefits of using Google Docs is that it easily allows you to share uh, a document with others, especially if they have a Google account as well. So if you go to the top right corner, it's, it, there's the share button and it has the lock saying it's private to me only. Uh, so I could click on that share button and then I could click um, or I could enter someone who I'd want to share this uh, document with. So if I wanted to share it with Carly, uh, I could put in her email there and then uh, I could send it over by clicking send. Uh, then I could also change how she'll be able to edit the document. Right now she's an editor, meaning she can change it freely. Uh, I can say she can be a commenter, which means she can add suggestions for how to edit the document. And then I can make her a viewer, meaning she can only view the document. And then if you also just want to send the link to someone, you can click on copy link. So it will be copied onto your computer. And then if you want to put that into a message that they can see uh, that as well. Let's see. Uh, another thing you can see on your, um, on your Google Docs is different version histories of your document. So if you click on where it says last edit was made two minutes ago, you can open the version history and it shows you the different versions of the documents that have been in the past. Again, everything's saved automatically as long as you're connected to the internet. So if you click on this other version of the document, it's when I first stored this, or when I first opened the document. And if I wanted to go back to that document so that I could use that prior version, all I would have to do is click on restore this version. So if I restore this version, uh, your says your document will revert to the version from today at 4.14 and I can click restore and it's back to how it was at 4.14. Then I could go back here and then it shows up as another version 
And then I could click on the one I had just done where I have all this. And then I can click on restore this version and it will bring it back. Let's now go through um, the find and replace feature. If you go here to edit, and um, you can see kind of the different formats that are here. There's undo and redo, uh, there's paste, uh, and then you can select everything in the document by saying select all, but you could also go through and do find and replace. This allows you to uh, basically uh, look through your whole document and replace everything that is there with something that you'd rather have. So for example, if I wanted to say, uh, or if I wanted to replace the uh, word volunteers with um, helpers, for example, and I want, if I had volunteers in a whole bunch of spots in your document, it might be a bit of a hassle to look through your whole document find where it says volunteers and change it to helpers manually, but the find and replace feature does that for you. So if I say find volunteers, you can see that it highlights, uh, highlights volunteers there. And then I can say what I want to replace it with. So if I say helpers, then I can go to that. And then I can say replace or replace all. So if I click replace all, you can see it changes that automatically. So you don't have to do it all on your own. Uh, then we have the different options in the view tab. As I mentioned before, there are the different editing modes that show up here. And then if you click on these different uh, um, options here, it will show you how it uh, affects the way you can see. So for example, if you click on the show print layout, I'm not too sure what it did there, but I'm sure it did something. And you can say show ruler. So uh, you can see at the top and on the side, it has different rulers uh, measuring the screen size. Uh, so you can turn that on or off. Then it has show outline. And then uh, some other options as well uh, with the equation toolbar and the section breaks. Now I'll go into the uh, tools menu and I want to make sure that you see specifically the voice typing. Uh, so if you want to use the voice typing, what you'll do is go to tools, then scroll all the way down to voice typing. And then all you have to do is click to speak. And then you want to make sure that Google Docs has access to your microphone. So I'll click allow. And then all I have to do is speak and say, whatever I say uh, shows up on the screen as text on the Google Doc. And then once I'm done uh, type, or once I'm done speaking, I just have to click on the microphone again and you can see it all showed up there. It every now and again will make a mistake, but if you have a mistake, you can go ahead and edit that manually. One thing I want to mention is that uh, if you have if you have something you want to use or say um, about the add-ons, uh, you can add different uh, kind of extensions onto your Google Docs. Uh, you can see that here under the extensions tab and then add-ons. You can get add-ons that gives you uh, more functionality in Google Docs. Let's go through headers and footers. So if you have something that you wanna put at the very top of your document, uh, what you could do is just tap or double click on the top of your document and it will show up as a header. So for example, if you wanted to put the date at the top of each, of your, each page of your document, what you could do is put date, let me say June 13th, now you can see it shows up at the top of each page of the document. So if you start a new page, there it is at the top there. Uh, so thank you for listening. Uh, if you'd like to learn this lesson with the Cyber Seniors Mentor, go to the Cyber Seniors website 
or call the number on the screen to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone session. Uh, we also host weekly tech drop-ins from 2 to 3 p.m. every Thursday.